So, I've waited my 10 minutes, cleaned out my brush, got my work over here in the window so it can dry. Now, I know what I'm going to suggest right now might seem odd to you, but I really have found it's the best way. So, what I'm going to say to you is, I'm not actually going to paint this opposite side until I'm finished. Once I'm completely finished this side, however many coats it takes, that's how many it gets. And I'll just keep it like this so that I never do touch the other side. It'll keep those nasty lines off. It also means with the foam, if you're making contact with the damp paint on anything, you'll end up wrecking it. So I find you don't have to necessarily do the edges every single layer. In fact, it's better if you don't. Just do them just enough to get paint all the way around nice and equally, and you're good to go. So I'm gonna pick this one up, do the exact same thing here, get a nice good liberal coating on. And we're almost done here. And then I will put it on pause again and come back when this coat is, see what happens if you draw too much, put too much pressure on it when you don't have enough paint on your brush. And all of a sudden you just wreck the, the thing you just did. So the object is to use a nice smooth steady stroke with pretty even pressure. And that's good enough, believe it or not. So now we're just gonna come along and give it a nice little coating. Come along here, and again, just give it a nice coating. What you wanna do, though, is make sure that you're not bubbling along the edge. You wanna not have any drips, or a whole bunch of high and low spots, especially in the inside where you're gonna mount it. So, that's that for that one. Now I'm just going to take this guy, going to give it the exact same treatment. And you'll see the first couple of layers, you don't really get much. Now one of the reasons I like to do it this way is because it means you can always just brace with your back finger. And look at that. Still not full coverage, but that's okay. I find with this stuff, you usually don't get that until about round three of your painting. So... If you expect to get it right away, you'll likely be disappointed. If you don't, you likely won't, which is kind of convenient, I guess. So, this is starting to look quite nice. Be careful of guys like this. Hairs. Look. Look at the line it made. And that's my own natural hairs, of course. But, I don't mind this line being here because it's a rudder. And we're going to use it as a rudder, so that line won't matter. So I'm just going to give it a quick once around here, get the edges real quick again. And again, you want to try and avoid dropping it like that or letting it touch stuff. And believe it or not, the best way to do it is to dam the torpedoes. Don't worry about getting a little bit on your fingers and just do it. Now come around the edges, and if you can't get it perfect, don't worry about it. Give yourself room to drop it into your palm rather than onto your work. And now at least I have that one side that I don't have to worry about touching, right? So I'm actually just going to coax it off with my brush, put it into the bottom of my tin, and there you go. So we're already at the point where you can see that every layer, this is just going to get darker, guys. This is going to be a really nice looking plane when it's done. I'm going to pause you. And uh, we'll come back in a minute and I'll show you the next step because this is going to be gorgeous when it's done, man. The light will change a lot at night. It'll look very dark, um, but it won't be black. It'll actually still stand out because of the silver and all the rest. That's the plan. But during the day, it'll be a nice paint scheme. So hold on and I'll be back. All right. So I'm guessing at this point, it's pretty clear to you guys that these are very different. This is the color that I mixed up. And it's the same three colors, guys. 
So again, you see I've cleaned my brush. I always, always, always clean my brush. So we're just going to take some more color and apply it here. And as you can see, this is turning out to be a really nice color, guys. I, I got to say, I had a feeling this was going to turn out nicely. And it, and it is not disappointing me. It's going to be a beautiful paint job when it's finished. So I would hope. But we'll see. Eh? Okay, so see what happens when you go too far? You'll end up peeling off the paint you just applied. So quick strokes, quick down the length. And like I said, you don't have to do the edges every single time I painted them. They're painted. That's good enough. Like that. Now we're going to poke up our control surfaces and do them. And the other side here, it'll be off camera, but I'm just laying down the paint, folks. Real simple. And as you can see here, I had applied some. And it's like, you see, you don't, don't have enough paint on the brush. You're not really applying it. You're pulling it off, and that's no good. So, like I said, don't worry if you don't get perfect coverage the first couple of coats. You never really do. But you'll see a marked improvement, and that's what you want to see. See that? That is a noticeable improvement over the amount of paint that was on it before without making any big spots, without making any imperfections. So... Now that you can see the difference I'm talking about, we're starting to get into the territory of you can start to see how dark a color this is really going to be. But it is totally different than this. This is what we get if we mix the colors. This is what we get when we layer the colors. That being said, we're just about finished here. I'm going to cut this one. But again, while I'm checking, I want to go over my edges. You don't need them every single layer if you've done them correctly and didn't touch them. But if you've touched them at all, check them and make sure to get your edges looking nice and neat. And even if you have to kind of push it around in your tin and just paint the edges, it's one of the reasons I like to not paint the other side and then I don't have to worry about it, right? If I have to push it around or move it. Like in this case, I can just kind of hold it against the other edge here and do this. And this way I can just kind of keep running the edges while, like I was saying before, touching as little as possible, just making sure that I have a nice set of edges. That's it. Oh, see that? Never go too far. But this is another reason why I just never ever do both sides. It makes it so much more awkward. The second you try and do both sides, guys, it just gets so much more awkward. So, lesson right there. See that? Because I didn't have enough paint on my brush and I just ruined that nice layer I had, right? So it's like now you almost need to start all over again if you want it to be even. So, there we go. I've spewed some more paint on. I'm going to go clean my brush again because you don't want any of these crusting up. It's also because as you paint, the bristles come loose. And by washing it frequently, you'll get rid of all those loose bristles and they won't be in your work. So that's it for this one. And you can see we're getting a nice dark color here. This is going to be a very different color than the planes I've done so far, but I like it. And uh, I'm going to end this one here. And in the next video, you will see the next step of paint. Um, I like to try and keep these from being too crazy long. This one's getting close to 10 minutes and really there's no need to show you the next three layers, which I think is what it'll take or four layers. The thinner the color, the more layers it takes and metallic colors tend to be thin. The thinnest will be mother of pearl. Keith out.